Hello, my name is Lisa Whitehouse and for today's tutorial I'm going to walk you through how to paint a cute little chick using watercolors. For a full list of everything you need to get started, be sure to check out the video description below. So I'm going to start by showing you guys how to draw the chick. Um, so with all my paintings I like to give a loose idea of where the drawing is or how big the drawing is going to be. So I'll often draw the head shape to give a good idea of how big I want the head to be and then the body. So just kind of getting a rough idea of the size I want it to be before I go then adding the detail. All right, so now once I've got that, I'm gonna add in the face and the detail, ignoring all of these lines here because these lines are just to give me an estimate. So we're not actually gonna use them. All right, so we know in proportion to this head, we're gonna draw the beak. So chicks tend to have a bit of a frowny face. So we'll make his mouth going down with a smaller section that kind of darts out here. And then the, the top is actually smaller than the bottom. Then we're gonna have the head come up and go back like so. And the eye is in line with the tip of the mouth. So it's gonna start about here. And some of these lines I'll erase if I don't like them, but it's important to just get down something to figure out where everything's gonna go. All right, so then we're gonna draw the fat little body. And you can't really see their wings because it's all such cute, teeny little feathers. Now I'm gonna make him even extra fluffy. And this is where I wanna get rid of a few of the extra lines now so that I don't confuse them with what I'm actually gonna be adding paint to. It's fairly important because we don't wanna go where we don't want to and then end up with a painting that doesn't really look quite right. All right, so we know now that this is where we want it to go. All right. So I'm finding that this body looks a little bit like flat at the bottom, so I'm actually gonna round that out. Just like so. All right, so then we gotta do the legs. So I'm gonna erase the place that I, the ones that I put in temporarily. And I'm gonna go in and add one leg at the back with a foot. And then this one has a toe that comes forward. And we'll keep these feet fairly loose just because I always feel like the feet look super funny. So I like to keep them a little bit looser. Chick feet are just weirdly big. I guess they grow into them. All right, so I'll draw that toe. And then this little one here. And then one that comes out here. And this one is just gonna be super long. Like so. I'm actually gonna make this one a little bit different in the back. Like so. All right, so some of these lines I wanna go in and adjust now. But overall, I think I'm pretty happy with that. All right, so first things first, I want to do the eye because I feel like once I've got the eye in there, the rest should come fairly easily. So I'm going to use straight black. I have a lamp black. Paints gray would work as well. And I'm just gonna fill in this eye, leaving a white spot. And I'll show you where that white spot's gonna go right away. I'm just being very careful with the eye because I feel like it's a very important part. And I wanna leave the white spot right here in the upper corner. Just like so. And I probably made my eye a tiny bit big, but we're just gonna roll with it. Cause with watercolors, there's often no going back with things. So it's better to just enjoy the process and not get too stressed about it. 
All right, so now I'm gonna move my brush around and fill in a lot of parts of the bird, but not every single part. Now my bird's gonna be lighter up here. That's where the light source is coming from. So while I am adding water there, I'm gonna be mindful of not adding too much paint there. And I'm gonna keep more of the paint down here where it's gonna be darker. All right, so I haven't filled it all in and I'm okay with that because this is loose watercolor. All right, so let's add some yellow. So I have a very bright yellow. Any yellow you have will do though, because this is just the first layer where we're trying to get down some pigment. So you can see I'm just making my way around. If there's areas that don't have any clear water, the paint will not bleed around. I'm being very careful not to touch the eye because my eye is still wet. It's probably smartest to wait until your eye is dry if you have the time. So now we're gonna let that make its way around. And I like to help it along sometimes. Just insinuate the direction of the hair. And then add a bit of clear water to help it along. Whenever your paint's not bleeding a lot, adding clear water will certainly help with that. All right, so I'm finding that these areas where I wanna keep it light, I'm actually gonna dab up a little bit of the color. All right. Now we're gonna do the beak. And so the beak, I'm going to use some orange and I'm not worrying about the face being dry yet because I'm okay with it bleeding in a little bit. So we're just going straight color on the canvas or paper, I should say. And don't worry about any of that effect that we get because we're actually gonna go in with another layer after to darken it and help it stand out a little bit. It doesn't look like it's bleeding straight into the face, but right now it might. And we're gonna do the same thing with the feet. So just not caring if it bleeds in. Just adding some orange, different shades of orange by adding more or less water. You can see if I want it darker, I just have less water. And I want it darker right up by the body. And I'm totally okay, once again, with it bleeding in. In fact, I would encourage that. Just like so, filling that in. And now we're gonna have a little bit of fun with splatters. I'm just going from high up, I'm adding some clear water splatters all over the place. And then taking some yellow and adding those. Where I want them darker, I'll add quite a few more. And the reason I do the clear water is because the clear water, I find that there's a lot more variation in size. So if I add clear water over top, some will get big, some will stay small. Just sort of depends how many there are in that area. So we're just gonna keep building up the beak now with a darker color and the top as well. And don't worry too much if you have a lot of pencil showing through as I do. We're gonna erase that right at the end once the painting is completely dry. But for the sake of this tutorial, it's nice to have those outlines there. So you can see where I'm going. All right, so now we're gonna add the detail on the feet too. Basically, we're just passing time while this all dries so that we can add a second coat. So we're gonna add some orange along the bottom of the foot. Like so, along the bottom of this foot. And then I'm gonna add some here, just to represent some shadowing that's happening. And we'll do the same thing here. And 
then around the bottom. Like so. Basically, I'm just adding some texture on those feet so that they're not quite too simple. All right. So I feel like the body has dried quite a bit now. You'll see it's still wet there. It's still a little bit wet, but we're gonna add one more dimension of color just in the areas that are dry. I'm gonna dab my brush around with clear water. And just around here. And then what I'm gonna do is take my dagger brush and a bit of yellow ochre, and I'm gonna go ahead and add some feathers now. So this is where I'm gonna add a tiny bit of detail. And because I added some clear water first, you won't actually see a lot of it. A lot of it's gonna disappear where there's clear water, but some of it will still show. And here I'm gonna add a tiny bit. Just keep this fairly simple. You don't have to go too crazy with these. Just make your way around. We're not drawing in every feather. That's not the goal with a painting like this. The goal is just to represent that there are in fact feathers, but we can't see where all of them are. Just like so. So now our eye is dry, so we're actually gonna come up and outline it a little bit closer. Not completely. It's okay to have a little bit of white stay. Like so. I'm just adding a few more. We're almost done. And then I'm gonna go in with clear water over top of some of those so that we even loosen them up a tiny bit more. All right, I'm just gonna soak up a few of these little spots. But that's basically it for this coat. And add a few more of these little fun splatters, maybe a few orange ones. Like so. And then once this is completely dry, we can go in and add just a tiny bit more detail. So I have gone in and erased a lot of the pencil lines and that's just because I wanted you guys to see how it looked when you don't have those pencil lines distracting from it. Um, there are a few left, but that's just because I draw a little bit dark just so that it shows on camera. But I recommend the best way to not have pencil lines is to not draw very dark when you're sketching it out initially. That is always ideal. Even if you wanna draw it out a little bit darker and then you can always go back and erase it before you lay the color down. All right, so now I'm just gonna go back in and add a little bit more color on the beak because I want this beak to stand out. So and I'm gonna take a tiny, tiny bit of Payne's Gray and just define where the beak separates right there. And just use that gray on top. But we're not using a lot of gray because this is gonna be a fairly light painting. So we don't need to use too much and then it detracts from the painting. So just something simpler like that. And then for the final touch, I just wanna take a little bit of yellow ochre and just add a few more feather strike strokes. Not lots, just a few, like so. If your painting's a lot smaller than mine, you need even less detail to make it look complete. But you get the idea, we're just adding a few here and there, but making sure to not overdo it because we want it to be nice and light and airy like this. And once you're done, you can sign it. I'm signing mine in orange because I feel like it coordinates well with the painting. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed painting along with me. Be sure to hit the like button below and please hit subscribe if you want to see other videos just like this one.